Very pale, lightest skin. At the very lightest end of the spectrum, you find skin so pale it looks like the sun is its biggest enemy. This tone showed up in northern Europe, where the days are short and the skies stay gray for much of the year. With so little sunlight around, people needed a way to pull in every bit they could. Pale skin made that possible, letting in more rays so the body could make enough vitamin D to stay healthy. The trade-off is kinda obvious. Pale skin burns quickly, freckles pop up from even mild exposure, and skin cancers are more common without protection. Modern sunscreen exists almost entirely because this skin type needed a shield. Back in history, though, sunscreen wasn't an option. Instead, adaptation meant hats, layers of clothing, or just avoiding midday sun altogether. Culturally, pale skin has gone through phases. In medieval Europe, it was linked with nobility because it showed you weren't working in the fields all day. Today, the opposite often happens. Tanning is trendy, while pale skin sometimes gets unfair stereotypes of being sickly or fragile. Light skin. Light skin sits just a step darker than the palace tones, with a little more built-in protection from the sun. You see it a lot in Southern Europe, Central Asia, and parts of North America, where the sunlight is stronger than up north, but not as harsh as near the equator. It's the middle ground, and light enough to soak up vitamin D when days are cloudy, but dark enough to handle a sunny afternoon without instantly burning. This skin tone can tan, though usually only a little. It's also where freckles show up the most, scattered across the faces and shoulders like tiny solar warning signs. Historically, light-skinned populations often balanced farming outdoors with life in villages or towns, meaning they needed both some protection and some vitamin D absorption. If you look at it culturally, then light skin has been tied to different beauty standards depending on the place and time. In some eras, it was prized as a sign of refinement. In others, people tried to darken it with tanning or makeup to fit in. Today, it simply sits in the huge variety of global skin tones, but its origin remains clear. Adaptation to regions where sunlight is steady, not extreme. Brown skin. Brown skin covers one of the widest ranges of tones on the planet, found across South Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Pacific. It carries more melanin than lighter skin, which acts like a built-in sunscreen. That protection means it doesn't burn as quickly, but it also changes how the body absorbs sunlight, so vitamin D levels are more tied to lifestyle and diet. Brown skin is most common in places close to the equator, where the sun is intense almost every day. In that kind of climate, people needed stronger natural protection, and higher melanin gave it to them. Over time, that's how this shade developed, but it doesn't all look the same. Brown skin can run from light golden tones to much deeper shades, shaped by local weather, family lines, and geography. Culturally, brown skin has held different meanings depending on where you stand. In many regions, it's simply the majority tone, and blends into daily life without comment. But in global media, beauty standards didn't always give it the same recognition. That's slowly shifting as more faces with brown skin appear on the big screen and in fashion, showing its range and richness. What's valuable here is that brown skin also represents resilience. It's proof of how people adapted to thrive in harsh sunlight while still carrying enough flexibility for generations to survive and grow. Dark brown skin. Dark brown skin has some of the highest levels of melanin in the human spectrum. That extra melanin works like natural armor, blocking most of the sun's harmful rays. In regions close to the equator, across Africa, South Asia, and Oceania, this wasn't just helpful, instead, it was a matter of survival. Under a hot sun almost every day of the year, people needed a shield built into their biology, and dark brown skin provided exactly that. This shade also brings another benefit. Melanin helps the skin hold onto moisture, which is a huge advantage in hot or dry climates. It's one reason people with darker skin often show signs of aging more slowly. Wrinkles and sun damage don't hit as hard because the skin is naturally protected. That doesn't mean that you're immune, everyone needs care, but the difference is noticeable. When communities with dark brown skin migrated north, though, new problems came up. In low sunlight areas, making vitamin D becomes harder. That's why even today, vitamin D deficiency is more common in people with darker tones who live in cloudy or cold regions. Diet and supplements often have to fill that gap. Dark brown skin has been judged, celebrated, and politicized depending on the time and place. Strip all that away, and what's left is simple. This shade is a survival story. It shows how people thrived in some of the toughest environments on Earth, turning constant sun into something the body could handle with ease. Very dark, deepest skin. 
At the deepest end of the spectrum, some people have skin so dark it reflects light with a blue or violet undertone. This shade has the highest levels of melanin, which gives it unmatched protection against the sun. In places right on the equator, where the sun is brutal almost every single day, this was really useful and it was the key to survival. Without that built-in shield, constant UV exposure would have been life-threatening. This tone also helps the body handle heat. Higher melanin levels keep moisture in the skin, reducing damage from dry air and slowing the signs of aging. That's one reason wrinkles often show up much later in deeper tones. In hot, dry environments, that extra resilience made a huge difference. People could work, travel, and live under the strongest sun on Earth without burning. But the same protection creates challenges in other climates. When groups with very dark skin moved north into regions with weak sunlight, vitamin D became harder to produce. Without enough of it, bones and immune systems suffer. That's why today, vitamin D deficiency is more common in darker skin communities living far from the equator. Food, supplements, or long hours outdoors often have to make up the difference. Culturally, very dark skin has carried every label imaginable, praised as strikingly beautiful, unfairly stereotyped, and even politicized. Strip all of that away though, and what's left is an evolutionary masterpiece. This is skin fine-tuned for the harshest sunlight on the planet, a living reminder of how adaptable the human body can be when survival is on the line. Freckled skin. Freckles aren't their own skin color, but they change the way skin looks and reacts to sunlight. They appear when melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color, gathers in small clusters instead of spreading evenly. When the sun hits those spots, they darken faster than the rest of the skin, which is why freckles often show up more in summer. They are most common in people with lighter skin, especially those of northern European ancestry, but freckles can show up on any skin tone. In cloudy northern climates, freckles didn't cause much trouble because the sun wasn't as harsh. In modern times though, when travel and migration spread people across the globe, freckles can end up under stronger sunlight than they were ever meant to face. That's why people with freckles usually need more care with sunscreen and shade, since their skin tells you straight away that UV rays hit harder. If you look at it culturally, then freckles have swung back and forth. For a long time, people thought freckles were flaws and tried to hide them. Then beauty trends flipped and suddenly freckles were celebrated. Some people even draw them on with makeup to get the look. What never changed though is the biology. Freckles are just melanin doing its job in a different pattern. Freckles just show up because your skin makes these extra pigments in small spots instead of just spreading them out. And that's why they get darker in the sun. This would also mean that your skin is more sensitive, so you have to be like extra careful about sunburn. Albinism. Albinism is a very rare condition where your body makes little to no melanin, the pigment that gives color to your skin, hair, and eyes. Without it, people sometimes look like they've skipped the tanning line their whole life. So that basically means that without enough or no melanin at all, your skin looks very pale. Hair can be white or light blonde, and eyes often appear light blue, gray, or even reddish because blood vessels show through. This can happen to people anywhere in the world, no matter their background, because it comes from changes in certain genes. Living with albinism means dealing with sunlight differently. Melanin usually works like a built-in sunscreen, but without it, skin burns fast. Think forgot your SPF at the beach fast, except it happens almost every time you step outside. That's why sunscreen, hats, and protective clothes are very much important. Doctors also check regularly for skin damage since the risk of skin cancer is higher. Eyes are affected too. Melanin helps the eyes develop normally, so many people with albinism have vision problems like sensitivity to light, shaky eye movements, or weaker depth perception. Glasses, tinted lenses, and even special seating in classrooms can make daily life easier. Albinism is very rare, but not extremely rare. In the United States and Europe, it shows up in about 1 out of every 18,000 to 20,000 births. In some parts of Africa, where the genetics are different, it can be as common as 1 in 3,000. Vitiligo Vitiligo is when parts of the skin lose their color. Instead of being even all over, lighter patches start to show up where the cells that make melanin stop working. These spots can pop up almost anywhere, like on the face, arms, hands, legs, and sometimes even in hair, leaving white or silver streaks. Vitiligo is more common than many people realize. Roughly one out of every hundred people worldwide has it. For some, the spots spread quickly. For others, they stay the same for years. It looks different on every person, and it can show up at almost any age. 
but doctors think it happens because the immune system gets mixed up. Instead of defending the body, it attacks the pigment cells by mistake. That's why the patches form. It's not contagious, and it doesn't make you sick, but those lighter areas burn much faster in the sun. Without melanin, there's no shield, so sunscreen and hats become part of daily life. In the past, vitiligo often came with stigma or unfair myths. Today, more people with it are visible in media and fashion, which helps others feel less alone. That change also shows how much awareness has grown. Vitiligo makes one thing clear, like the skin color can usually change. When pigment cells stop doing their job, the skin shifts in its look and even handles sunlight differently. Birthmarks Some people are born with little patches of skin that stand out from the rest. And no, it's not because a baby rolled across a coffee table. These are birthmarks. They're there from the start, like skin deciding it wants a head start on being unique. They come in all kinds, like brown cafe au lait spots, look like someone dabbed a brush of hot chocolate on the skin. Blue-gray marks, often called Mongolian spots, usually show up on babies' backs or legs and fade as they grow. Then there are reddish marks caused by clusters of tiny blood vessels near the surface. Some fade, some stick around, and some move through life like a permanent signature. Doctors say birthmarks form while the baby is still developing in the womb, when pigment cells or blood vessels don't spread out evenly. Most are harmless, the bigger ones just get checked by doctors now and then to make sure they're not causing problems. And what's cool about birthmarks is that they remind us that skin color isn't a simple light-to-dark scale.